So briefly, we're going to review what we covered before we left, um, and that is the properties of a rhombus and a uh, rectangle. So first we'll start with the rhombus. So a rhombus is defined as a parallelogram that has one of two things. It either has a pair of congruent adjacent sides, which is what I've drawn, or the diagonals are perpendicular. So we're going to briefly review why that happens. So this is a parallelogram. So we have here um, a diagram where these two sides are adjacent. So that's part of being a rhombus. And because it's a parallelogram, that means the opposite sides are also congruent which means all four sides are congruent. So that's also a property of a rhombus, that all four sides are congruent. Um, and by doing this, uh, we're actually going to create uh, two, four different triangles that are actually congruent. Um, and let's take a look as to why that happens. Um, so the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent to one another. I'm sorry, are bisect each other. So that means this half is going to be congruent to this one put two marks on them to be different from the sides, and these are going to be congruent as well. Get three marks on these, which makes all four of these triangles congruent by SSS. And if all four of these triangles are congruent as by SSS, then all four of the angles in the center have to be right angles. In order for these four angles to be the same, they all have to be 90. So in a rhombus, not only are all all four sides congruent, which happens because it's a parallelogram with two pairs, with one pair of congruent adjacent sides, um, it creates four congruent triangles and the diagonals intersect and are perpendicular to one another. Another property that comes up is because these four triangles are congruent, they also happen to have congruent angles by CPCTC. So this angle and this angle are congruent to this angle and this angle. These are all the corresponding parts, which means technically this diagonal is an angle bisector. So that's only true in the rhombus. In a rhombus, the diagonal is a um, angle bisector. Similarly, these angles are all going to be congruent to one another because these are the corresponding angles, which means this diagonal is also an angle bisector for both angles. So the diagonals of a rhombus are an angle bisector. So um, we make four congruent right triangles with the diagonals, and the diagonals are angle bisectors. So those are properties of a rhombus. Now, because a square is also a rhombus, this are, these are also properties of a square. Uh, let's take a look at the rectangle really quickly. So in a rectangle, which is a parallelogram with at least one right angle, um, the, other right, the other angle over here will be a right angle as well. All of them are. Um, but I'm just drawing this particular right angle for a moment. Um, the diagonals are going to be congruent. And the reason for that is we, we can draw two triangles. Uh, we can draw the diagonals here and make two triangles. Um, this triangle, the green one, and this triangle, the blue one. And both triangles are going to be congruent to one another because of SAS. They have these sides that are congruent because they're opposite sides of a parallelogram. This side, which is reflexive, and they have a right angle here and a right angle here. So these two triangles are congruent by SAS, making the diagonals congruent. So if you have a rectangle, then you have congruent diagonals. Now conveniently, because the diagonals are congruent, let's say this, con this diagonal was 20 long. Because the diagonals bisect each other, that makes this 10 and this 10. And because the diagonals are the same, this is also 20 long, making these 10 and 10. So all four of the half diagonals are also congruent. All right, and that's pretty much everything we needed to know about the rectangle and the rhombus uh, for our class tomorrow. Um, keep in mind that a square is also a rectangle, so this property is also true for the diagonals of a square.